Hey, welcome to my channel today. In this next clip, I want to show you Mo Norman talking to Lauren Rubenstein. Lauren wrote a book called Mo and Me. Lauren is a sports writer from Canada. He was on the range with Mo in 2001, and they were talking about how Mo produced the kind of speed he produced with so little effort. Mo called it effortless power. Check out this comment from Mo. So simple. Oh. <laughs> so simple. Always at my target. Well, you were saying before something that practice doesn't make perfect. No. But on the other hand, you develop your system, your method by hitting 800 balls a day, which is a lot of practice. <laughs> no, I that's a hard way. I still didn't become perfect. <laughs> I still didn't become perfect. No. What's the good of practice then? What should people be doing? Just practicing their positions and their move. That's all. Don't worry about results. But just practice, making sure you get the move you want to get. That suits your makeup. Very smooth, but real, very a lot of rhythmic. But but uh, smooth centrifugal force, never brute force. Like it's like you're seeing all the guys today. It's brute force now. That's why they can't hit the ball where they're looking. But smooth centrifugal force. Everything coordinates together, and there's no work in it. Then. It's effortless motion. It's effortless. Effortless power. Effortless power. Oh, that's all. Effort, effortless power. power. What exactly was Mo talking about effortless power? Now, there's other things Mo would talk about when he discussed his swing. You know, he did say effortless power, purity of technique, efficiency, um, least amount of moving parts. There's a lot of ways Mo described the way he felt and talked about his golf swing and the way he looked at it and the way he actually if you ask Mo questions about a swing, the way he would discuss how he produced such amazing results with what many people consider so little effort. He didn't make a huge backswing. He didn't have a huge rotation and all this stuff going on. He was very efficient in his movement. Now, I'm very much into the biomechanics of a golf swing. And what that means is, can you take a golf club and can you put position this machine in a way that allows you to take the club back, stabilize, produce speed, release the speed in the right place, and efficiently strike a golf ball using this machine with the least amount of effort, getting the maximum amount of force and efficiency, hitting the ball solid on the face, producing a consistent result. So what you're getting at here, what I'm getting at, is I'm trying to get you to not move more, but actually move less, but more efficiently. So let's kind of break the body apart for a minute. And let's kind of look at what's going on with the golf swing movement, right? To see what's actually happening inside of a swing to see how the parts are moving. Let's break it apart. The first thing you have is everything below the waist, right? Knees, feet, ankles, hips, and then the pelvis. So you got this kind of lower body. This is very much a stabilizing force in the golf swing. Anybody who tells you that the lower body is producing speed, which I'm going to show you in a minute, they're not telling you the whole truth because you don't produce speed in lower body. However, don't freak out on my channel here and start telling me how everybody produces lower body speed. You can't produce speed if you don't have good lower body motion, except the acceleration of lower body is not necessarily helping you produce arm speed, right? You can move the lower body very fast, 
and if the upper body goes slow, you don't produce speed. So this isn't a speed producer, but you can't produce speed without it according to 3D and biomechanics. However, now that we know that this is a stabilizing force and we need it to stabilize and rotate during the motion, you have the upper body. This upper body is attached to the shoulders and the arms. So upper body positioning is about tilt and staying in a, in a tilt of the body that can strike an object that's on the ground there. So now we have the upper body and it's very much a rotational element that we need, but it's more about how we tilt the upper body. So think of the lower body as stabilizing. Think of the upper torso and upper body is being in the proper tilt, all right? So now we have two very different segments of the body that have different functions in this idea of efficiency. Now, now we come to the, ar the shoulders, arms, and hands, and I'm gonna kinda ignore the hands for a minute because these things are, like I said, they're clamps on the golf club, but you have your arms and your shoulders. These are the major movers in a golf swing. So I can stand here, I cannot move my pelvis, not move my legs, not move my torso, and I can stand here and I can almost make a full golf swing without torso movement. See that? I can hit a golf ball very far. That ball went about 180. So I can hit this driver and I can hit it further than that very far without much torso. And I know it moved a little, don't get me wrong, but with very little body movement, I can hit a golf ball pretty darn far because most of the speed production in a golf swing is happening shoulders, arms, and the function of how the hands are working with that. Now, and I'm not, I'm, I'm, when I'm talking major, I'm talking 80%, right? So, now that you kind of understand how the body breaks down into its efficiencies, when Mo talked about effortless power, what you're trying to do with the body is you're trying to position it correctly so the arms can do their job and the shoulders. So, this is what I see go wrong in golf swings body positions off and the arms have no place to really go, right? So once we position the inside, the body, we can then move the arms correctly. So remember, let's back this up one more step. Lower body, put it in a position to stabilize. Trail foot, lead foot, build my A-frame of my legs. Stability, right? Upper body, put it in the proper tilts. Got it? Got my clamps on the golf club. All I gotta do now is move to a position where the arms can leverage stabilize, rotate the body, and move the arms and hands as fast as I can while my body stays tilted. See what's happening here is my body position is allowing the arms to move quickly. I'm getting efficiency because my arms and hands and shoulders can move. It's very much arms and shoulders producing this massive amount of speed, which is why Mo felt he could be so efficient because his body position was so stable. So watch this. As I set up, there's my single plane. Leverage the club, stabilize, and watch the swing now. Very efficient. And what's happening is you sequence that now, boom, stabilize. Watch this, body moves right here. I have all the energy in my arms. Fire that energy through the ball. So I feel like there's an accumulation of energy. I'm not hitting with my arms. I'm positioning my body, then hitting with my arms. And there's a huge difference in that. They call that lag, if you wanna know the term for it. What's happening there is I'm taking it back, I'm stabilizing, I'm positioning the body, and then I release his arms to the ball. That's why Mo felt he was so efficient, because the body moved as little as possible. The, the stabilization was easy because he stabilized lower body into a flex lead knee. His foot stayed on the ground, so that was easy, right? So I'm in the proper position, I get to the top, I stabilize, I accumulate my power, now release the shoulders, hands, and arms to the ball. And he could do that consistently, why? Because the body position was so good. And that's what I kind of teach, is how do, how do you get the body in a stable position? How do you get the upper body in the proper tilt? And how do you use the ar arms and shoulders and hands correctly to strike a golf ball. And that's why Mo discussed how efficient he was. That's why he called it purity of technique. And that's why he could use the least amount of movement and hit the greatest golf shots and be the best ball striker that ever played the game.